I hope so. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes. I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now the whisper strange story. The calculator. <laughs> was quiet and the fog was moving in. Gray, misty patches swirling about the street lights of the commercial district. Just a San Francisco waterfront. The tower clock atop the ferry building pointed at 20 minutes of 11. As Glenn Tillman stepped out of the offices of the Morrison Chemical Company, turned up his coat collar to shut out the chill of the night. Outwardly, you appear calm, don't you, Glenn? And your steps slow and even as you stroll down the deserted street into an all-night diner at the corner of the block. Hello, Glenn. Good morning to meet you huh? Yeah. Had a knock off for a cup of coffee. Uh, make it black, Jeff. Sure. Think your father is in Mac? Mac? No. He's at the plant. Yes. How do you guys look like this night after night? Better show up, boy. You live longer. Who are like you? I put in my What was that? It sounded like an explosion. Well, it's down the block somewhere. Come on, let's have a look. Hey, look up there. Fire. It's our plan. Come on, you guys. You rush down the street. The others close behind. Your heart is beating wildly, isn't it, Grace? Yes. Your building is on fire. Your partner, Max Linder, is in there somewhere. Somewhere in that nightmare of flame and smoke. And then as you reach the scene, another explosion rocks the building. Hey, better stand back, you guys. Get out of the way, Jeff. Easy, fellow. Where are you going? Max is in there. I gotta get to him. No, you don't, Glenn. Let me go. There's still a giant explosive thing at all. Let me go. Don't be a fool. You can't go in there. Jeff, please. Let's go. Hey, you guys, give me a hand here. Take it easy, Glenn. There isn't anything you can do. The Max is in there, I said. Sure, sure. We know how you feel, but we can't let you go in. It'll be good. Come on, Glenn. Why are you sticking around here? All right, Jeff. All right. Oh, wait a minute. There's the fire captain over there. Let me check with it. Come on. Captain? Captain? Yes? Uh, Captain, my partner... Uh, who are you? My name's Tillman. My partner, Max Tillman. Oh, so you're Mr. Tillman. Well, you'll be glad to know some of my boys found your partner in the back alley. He managed to get out of the building somehow. What? What? You mean, you mean he's alive? Yeah, that's right. Ambulance took him to emergency a few minutes ago. He'll be okay. Somehow you manage to control the sudden wave of panic that sweeps over you, don't you, Glenn? You move out of the crowd quickly. Tell Jeff you're going on to the hospital. Instead, you drive to your apartment. There, you take a small packet of blueprints out of your pocket. Stare at it for a moment. And then hide it behind the painting hanging over the mantel. Your hand is shaking badly, isn't it, Glenn, as you pour yourself a drink and slump down into a chair. An hour later, you're still sitting there, staring down at the now empty glass. Huh? Who is it? Joanna Dressler. Hello, Glenn. Come in, Joanna. I was listening to the radio. What about Miss Clayton? I was worried about you. Me or the blueprint? Oh, well, naturally, I was concerned about them, too. After all, the people I represent have offered $50,000 for your invention. Okay, okay, this place. Don't worry about it. Uh, the news report said that your friend Lima had been injured. Not badly, so I understand. Well, you were not at the factory when the explosion occurred. No. No, I left the building a few minutes before. How fortunate. You find something amusing? <laughs> not exactly amusing. I didn't know anything about the explosion if it uh, really was an accident. What are you driving at? A thought occurred to me. 
We will have two young inventors who suddenly make a lot of startling discoveries. The tiniest gadget worth a lot of money. And invaluable to any country with an air force. So? So they decide to sell it to the highest bidder. Now the organization in Antwerp offers $50,000 to the two inventors. Then, one of them is almost killed in an explosion. Get to the point. If he had been killed, that would mean the other inventor, you, would collect all the money. Look, are you insinuating that? Oh, I'm not Yes. But if the explosion was an accident, then that doesn't concern me too much. As I told you, I'm interested in the blueprints of your invention. But when I thought it was wrong about you, I meant it. It is wrong. Thanks. You see, he, he most of my discussions have been with you, and, well, frankly, I, I became quite fond of you. You really mean that, Joanna? Why else should I say it? So be careful, darling. I wouldn't want anything to happen to you. What could happen to me? Something rather violent, I'm afraid. If your partner Max should suspect that that explosion wasn't an accident. Long after Johanna's gone, you paced the apartment, wondering just how sincere she was when she told you she was fond of you. She's a beautiful woman, isn't she, Granny? Charming and intelligent, too. And you're sure the two of you could accomplish big things. But she's clever, too. And the agent of a foreign organization. And you decide to reserve final judgment until you're certain of her motive. Meantime, there's Max to worry about. You wonder if he suspects that you tried to kill him. You'll have to face him sooner or later, won't you, Glenn? And you realize that you've got to call at the hospital tonight. It'll look strange if you don't. It's going to be a terrifying ordeal. And your nerves are almost at the breaking point when you arrive at the hospital. You're surprised to see your partner sitting up in bed. You're relieved a little as you note the faint trace of a smile on his lips. Hi, old Glenn. Maxie, how do you feel? How are you? Oh, not too bad. Just shaking up. Bruises here and there. I'll be okay, the doctor. Oh, I'm sure glad to hear that. You sure had a close call. What in the world happened, anyway? I don't know. The experimental one of the plant just blew apart at the scene. Just like that. Yeah. How'd you manage to get out? A few minutes after you left, I heard the phone ringing in one of the offices down in the hall. I left my work table to answer it, and that's when it happened. Glass knocked me down the stairs. I managed to crawl in the alley. Well, lucky thing that phone rang when it did, huh? Yeah. Wasn't it lucky for me, Glenn? Yeah. I, uh, guess that part of the plant's a total wreck. So I understand. My father was here a few minutes ago interviewing me. Said it was completely demolished. Farmer did a good job, though. So the rest of the building. Glad to hear that, huh, Glenn? Oh, sure. You mean the officers? Especially our office. And the little package of blueprints that's away in my bottom drawer. Yeah. Uh, look, fella, you probably want to get some sleep. No, uh, no, no. Took a while, Glenn. Doc said he'd be back in a bit and check me over. Probably let me go home. Tonight? Yeah. I thought maybe you'd drive me back to my apartment. Well, sure, but you don't mind, do you? No. No, I don't mind. It's something you hadn't expected then, that Max would be released from the hospital so soon. It means you'll have to move fast. Return the blueprints to his desk first thing in the morning. It wouldn't do if Max discovered they were missing, would it? He'd no longer only suspect that you tried to kill him. He'd know for sure. I'm so glad to get out of that hospital. It's really horrible. Oh, you've had a rough night, Max, but it's all over now. Good night, Red. Uh, turn right. Next corner, huh? Turn right? Yeah. I want to drop by the office first. What? You, you mean now? Now. But why? The blueprints. They were safe when we pick them up tonight. Before something else happens. You never can tell when there's been a fire. Oh, now, Lord, Max. Nothing's going to happen. Never not, said so. Well, forget it. Now, Glenn. I want to pick up those blueprints tonight. 
Come on, turn right at the next corner. doesn't it, Gwen? Your partner, Max, has miraculous escape from your attempt to kill him and his sudden decision to drive back to the office to pick up the blueprint of the electro-gyro that you developed together, which will outmode present-day guided missiles. Blueprints that are now hidden away in your apartment. On route, you try to persuade him to wait till morning, but it's no use. He's determined to get them. And you wonder what he'll do when he discovers their missing. The fog rolls in from the bay. The mind is working frantically, searching for a way to prevent him from making that discovery. And then almost before you realize that you find yourself pulling up in front of the building. Well, I sure made a mess out of the front of the building, Edwin. Yeah. Uh, look, Max, it might be dangerous going in there now. Why don't you relax? Just a minute, there. Huh? Oh. Well, good evening, officer. Good evening. I'm thinking of going inside, will you? Why, why, yes. Why, yes. Oh, it's it's all right, officer. We work for the Morrison Company. Uh, my name's Linda, and this is Glenn Tillman. Sorry, gentlemen, no one's allowed in the building until we've been thoroughly inspected. But we only want to check the offices. It'll only take a minute. Good. Are you arguing about it, Mr. Linda? Yeah, come on, Max. The officer's only following his orders. We can look over the files in the morning. After the building has been inspected. Well, all right. Sorry, gentlemen, but you know how it is. But, of course, officer. We understand. Come on, Max. That was close, wasn't it, Glenn? Much too close. But you're safe, at least for the time being. Ten minutes later, you drop Max off at his apartment and then drive on towards your own. But before you get there, you decide you can't take any more chances. You can't wait till morning. Somehow you've got to get inside that building tonight. Replace the blueprint of a valuable invention in Max's death. You park in front of your apartment, hurry upstairs, pick up the blueprint, and return to your car. You turn around and drive back toward the plant. It's terribly risky, isn't it, Greg? But a risk you must take. When you reach the plant, you know the last one. What are you doing back here? All right. Nothing, officer. I just came down to look over the building. I, I'm employed here. Well, right, well, let's have a look at you. Really, officer? I... Uh, uh, you're not the one. Well, what do you mean? Someone was falling around inside this building about ten minutes ago. What? Oh, all those squadrons who was coming out. They slipped past me. Go more than a yellow convertible. A, a yellow convertible? You know who it might have been? Uh, no. No, I don't. <laughs> But you do know, don't you, Glenn? Yes. Max drives the yellow convertible. You're certain it was he. And you're certain, too, now, that Max knows the blueprints are gone, that you have them, and that you tried to kill him. You know, too, that you must move quickly. Get out of town before he has a chance to move against you. You decide to go directly to Johanna Dressler. Attempt to close the deal for the blueprints tonight. At Johanna's apartment building, you approach cautiously. Then stop dreading the track. Someone is standing in a doorway across the street. It's Max. Then you drive back to your apartment. Pick up the blueprint. You don't want to see Max. And you don't want him to find you. So you decide to go into hiding until your deal with Joanna is finished. You pack a suitcase and then drive downtown to a hotel. Uh, I'd like a room. Anything you have available. Oh, of course. If you'll register here, please. All right. Now, let me see. I have a nice room in the rear of the building. It's full. That'll be fine. What, sir? Room 511. I'll uh, have the boy take your things up immediately, Mr. Uh, Mr. Bennett. Thank you. Are you going to be with us long, Mr. Maybe, maybe not. Depends on how soon I can close the deal. <laughs> difficult completing the transaction with Joanna with Max watching her so closely. You want to get the money, all of it, as quickly as possible and then leave town. But Max stands in your way. You spend the rest of the night thinking about it. 
what you must do. The following morning, you put in a call to Jill Allen. I've got the hour to call it. It isn't 8 o'clock. Do you want to wait till we close this deal? Oh, as soon as I get to the bank and then draw a draft. I want it all, Joanna, the 50000 in cash. All of it? But, man, darling, that wasn't in the agreement. I know. How about when you turn over the blueprints the other half after my company is that time to study them? Sorry, darling. We do it my way or else. Or else what? Or else I close a deal with one of your competitors. Really? Yes. You know, yours isn't the only firm interested in our invention, sweetheart. I have an offer of 50000 cash right now for it. I'm only giving your company the opportunity to match that offer. <laughs> it won't work, darling. You're fibbing, aren't you, about this competitive? Am I? Of course you are. I'm sorry, Dan. My company would never do it. I'm kidding, huh? Well, it might interest you to know I'm calling from your competitor's place right now. Really? Yes. Why don't you call the Hotel Radford? Ask for Mr. Benner's room. Get yourself a little surprise. Well? All right, then. I believe you. Give me time to put through a call to Antwerp, will you? Sure, fair enough. I should have an answer for you soon. Uh, why don't we have dinner together, say, at the Blue Rock Inn? No, I don't think that... The Blue Rock Inn? Up the coast, you mean? Something wrong with it? Why, no, sweetheart. Nothing at all. All right, I'll meet you there. Eight o'clock. Right. It occurred to you suddenly, didn't it, friend? You're almost certain Max is watching Johanna Dressler in the hope of finding the two of you together and forcing the showdown. You are certain he'll follow her wherever she goes. And the Blue Rock Inn, several miles up the lonely coast road, will provide an excellent setting for getting Max out of the way permanently. And things have reached a point where you must be rid of Max. Because you've decided, as long as he's alive, you know you'll never have a moment's peace. <laughs> Early that evening, you drive to the Blue Rock Inn, wait in the shadows of the parking area. Keep your motor running so you can get away quickly. A few minutes before eight, Joanna drives up, walks past without seeing you and enters the inn. Moments later, another car drives in. A yellow convertible. Max. You draw the 38 from your pocket. Then, as he comes up the path... I was delayed in town. Listen, Johanna, there's no point in my driving way out there now. Uh, why don't we meet somewhere else? How about the Hill House? Well, all right. Only Lynn. Yes? I'm worried. There's something wrong. Wrong? Lynn, I'm being followed. I'm sure of it. Oh. Uh, don't worry about it, Johanna. We'll be together soon. All right. Glenn, you'll be pleased to know that my company has agreed to your terms. $50,000 when you give me the blueprint. Oh, that's fine, sweetheart. That's fine. You smile as you hang up the phone, don't you, Glenn? Smile at Johanna's fears about being followed. You're certain it was Max who was following her. Then you begin to wonder. Perhaps someone else is on Johanna's trail. You decide to keep the gun handy just in case. You drive to the hill house. Wait for Johanna in the cocktail bar. Johanna, over here. Hi, I'm not Oh, sit down. What took you so long? Oh, you must be pregnant, Helen. The man was murdered near the Blue Rock Inn tonight. Really? Your well, partner, Mark Slender. It was you, wasn't it, Lynn? Me? I know we were following you. I certainly planned it that way. Johanna, how can you say All that? All right, forget it. I don't think Max was the only one following me. Oh? Oh, we must be careful, darling. I'll, I'll give you the money in the morning when the bank opens. And then I must fly back to New York. So soon? Well, I'll see you better about it once the blueprints are turned over to a representative of my organization. Well, not coming back to San Francisco. Should I? 
No. I've had again to see New York for some time. Look, why don't we fly back together? Oh, I was hoping you'd see this plane. I'd look better to safer. You have a gun. Right. We'll be safe, Joanna. Well, let's have a drink on it. Oh, I could lose one, Glenn. So a safe journey together. And a happy landing. <laughs> It's over, isn't it, Glenn? And you feel certain that you're in the clear. Only the possibility that someone else might be following Johanna makes you decide to put the 38 that you used to kill Max Linder into your suitcase. Downstairs, you settle up the bill for the room you took as Mr. Benner, inquire of the clerk as to the time your plane is to take off, and then pick up Johanna in a taxi. At the airport, you turn in your luggage and wander into the cocktail lounge with Johanna on your arm. Oh, darling, I've made such wonderful plans for us in New York. Nightclub, theaters. We'll have a glorious two weeks. Why only two weeks? Well, I should go back to Europe for now. Oh, Lord, Joe, why not quit the company? I'm scared of it. The risk is rather dangerous. Dangerous? How so? I'm a competition, darling. Sometimes they can become rather violent. Girl must be very careful. Take your friend Mr. Bennett, for example. He's quite dangerous. <laughs> Bennett? Really? Chris. If he was willing to pay 50000 for, for these blueprints, like you said, well, he must have ordered them badly. Who did he try to sell me? Who did he get the blueprints by force? <laughs> Not a chance of that, sweetheart. I know. I took care of it. What? I know you so that your Mr. Bernard would be delayed long enough so that we could get out of town. Johanna. What? What did you do? I put in a call to the police before we picked me up at my apartment. An anonymous call, naturally. I told him that Mr. Benner, room 511, Hotel Radford, was involved in the shooting of your partner, Max Linder. You did what? <laughs> A nice little joke to say of Mr. Benner, don't you think? Joke? Johanna, you little fool. Don't you understand? I'm Benner. I set that up. I'm Mr. Benner. Thanks, Benner. You're identifying yourself. Huh? Makes it easier for me. Oh, uh, I'm Lieutenant Foster, homicide. The hotel clerk said to come to the airport and look for a man in a checkered overcoat and a light gray hat, but this way it's not there, There's been a mistake. Oh, and you made it. Come on, Mr. Benham. You two, miss. There's a lot of things we'd like to ask you about. Where are you going? To police headquarters. But first to the baggage room to pick up your luggage. You see, I'm looking for the gun that was used to kill a man named Max Linda last night. A thirty-eight. If you haven't got it on you, I've got a hunch we'll find it in one of your bags. Well, Mr. Benner, shall we go? Next week with another tale from his never-ending file. <laughs>